Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John and as always thank you so much for being here. Got a good topic for you today. Let's go for it. What's the most deranged thing you've ever seen someone do? I will not say for work. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hi doctor here. Where shall I begin? I remember one young lady who came in for a routine visit but her eyelids were very swollen from her fake eyelashes. The adhesive was laid on thick and was literally blocking her gland orifices and causing massive infection of both eyelids. Despite the severe swelling, she didn't seem particularly phased. It wasn't even her reason for the visit. I looked at her under the lamp, then told her that those lashes are going to need to go. So I turned around to grab some petroleum jelly and some q-tips to work those adhesive clumps off slowly when I start hearing what sounds like velcro being torn apart. I turn around and she ripped out both top lids of fake lashes including every single natural lash she had. It was a startlingly clean job and she just looked at me completely bald eyed and said okay now what? Don't forget they were infected and swollen. Well. Now they were even more swollen and had a ton of ripped off lash stumps. So, prescribed her antibiotics and told her that her lashes would probably grow back over the next few weeks. Edit. Spelling. Edit 2. Phased is phased. Worked in an ICU. The patient was being asked their goals of care and if they wanted to be resuscitated, the patient said yes. Her daughter said no. The attending said, well, your mom is still competent, so we have to follow her wishes. The daughter pulled the doctor aside and said, why don't you just give her some medication to put her to sleep? She won't be competent, and then my word goes, and you pull the plug. Silence for a while, and then the attending just said, no, we don't do that, very slowly, and escorted the daughter out of the room. The patient made it out of the hospital okay that time anyway. I sometimes wonder how she did after that. Gal I went to culinary school with, early 90s, all of a sudden started juggling her knives in the hall between classes in front of one of the chef instructors. Yes, she immediately had her 8 inch chef knife stuck 3 inches in the middle of her palm. Chef just sighed, shook his head, and pushed the gal to the office to get her to the ER. Was sitting in a cafe once when a man sitting a few tables away from me locked eyes with me. Maintaining eye contact, he leaned over to the vase of pussy willow stems decorating the table and munched them. He just took a whole bite of a twig and fuzzy willow bud. In a nightclub in the late 80s, bloke sitting at a table on his own, he poured what he had left in his pint glass onto the floor, then took a bite out of the glass. Glass severed his top lip. He then sat there bleeding into the glass. There was a lot of blood. Not pretty. I had a younger cousin who I was absolutely scared of when I was younger, refused to be alone with her, stopped tagging along to holiday in the area, the kind of kid that pulled out a box of crickets under her bed to show me how she pulled off their legs and put tacks through them. She cut my hair in my sleep during a sleepover. She flattened her mom's tire once because she wouldn't take us to a movie. She was about seven. Last I heard, she was in therapy and living with the grandparents today. Mom couldn't handle her. Restaurant kitchen, middle of the busiest night of the year. Something went wrong, not sure what, but I'm pretty sure it was a fairly small setback. Sous chef goes ballistic, screams at some people, then reaches barehanded into the blast oven and grabs out two scorching hot bowls of baked soup, runs his hands and throws them into the window with the skin from his palms visibly stuck to it in places. He immediately calms down, walks off the line to treat his hands, came back out to try and direct from the front for a bit, then at some point just went home without saying anything, came back a week or two later divorced from his wife. And to be honest with you, I don't even think this would make my top 10 list of crazy things I've seen chefs do on the line in a night. I was in a bar when some guys got into an argument. The aggressor got kicked out and the guy who he started a fight with went to the bar and everyone continued. As I'm getting out for a cigarette, I see the guy who'd had fight started with him going out the door and the aggressor was waiting outside. 
and jumped him. Mother Effer immediately stuffed his fingers down his throat and vomited on the guy. Straight up defense mechanism puke. The guy who was trying to fight just ran away. One of the wildest things I've ever seen. I once had a third floor apartment that was situated next to a parking garage that was four stories tall. I woke up one morning to an incredibly loud sound like a super loud smacking noise. I looked out my balcony and saw a guy face down with a torrent of bright red blood just starting to pour out of his head. It was horrific. About 45 minutes later, my wife got home from her first trip to Mardi Gras with her friends and I was white as a ghost. Not exactly a nice way to be welcomed home. The cops put up a kind of sheet around the scene, but we could see directly into it. They literally hosed this dude's effing brain matter into a gutter and a dark stain remained on the asphalt for weeks. Turned out, the dude was on trial for some pedophilia-related charges and just randomly found my apartment complex to commit suicide because he'd been found guilty and was set to be sentenced that day. I would get the weirdest feeling when I've had to park up where he jumped, just knowing that was some person. A uh, view for the last mortal moments on earth was intense and made me kind of nauseous and creeped out. Me and a few mates were at a 24-hour Chinese restaurant at 2.30 a.m. There was a suspicious-looking guy in a trench coat hanging around the front window where they keep their ducks hanging. That guy grabbed one of the ducks, shoved it into his trench coat, ran out of the place, and held a cab. One of the chefs saw shouted, Duck! and ran out after him, followed by about three other guys. They forced the cab's door open. The driver yelled at the guy in the trench coat, just give him the damn duck back. They dragged the trench coat guy out of the car and kicked the shit out of him, then took the duck from his trench coat and hung it back up in the window. I wonder if that was a very uh, observant employee or if this window was constantly cased by duck thieves. What do you think? Many years ago, I'm with my dad downtown Edmonton on Christmas Day, buying my girlfriend last-minute earrings. It was minus 30 degrees Celsius. We stop at a sub shop to grab lunch, and as we are eating, I suddenly spot something that puts a stunned look on my face. My dad asks why I look so perplexed, so I tell him, turn around and see for yourself. Here's a six-foot-four black man, buck naked, trunk waving in the cold winter air, barefoot, walking down the street outside. People chasing him with blankets trying to cover him, but he shakes them off and keeps marching. Found out later in the newspaper that he had lost his job and snapped. Merry Christmas, everybody. My algebra teacher was really frustrated with the class. She slapped herself across the face hard, whispered, that felt good, and walked out the door. We also had a music teacher throw a metal music stand into the band. I don't think we were a pleasure to teach. I went to a boarding school where we all ate at tables, seating 12 per table with a perfect senior boy overseer at the head. The prefect puked into his dinner plate and then finished his plate bar oh, and all. By the way, it was sold as a posh school, but in truth, it was a Dickensian hellhole where they beat us with canes if we got out of line. This kid, a couple years younger than me growing up, used to sit alone at the breakfast tables in school, look kids dead in the eyes, and smash little jam packets and milk cartons. We got older and he destroyed a computer in the computer lab out of complete nowhere. Fast forward to when he's 17. He moved it with his grandparents because his parents couldn't handle him anymore. One day he goes ballistic. He kills his grandparents' cat with a club, beat the living shit out of both of his grandparents, and gets in a shootout with the police. They shot him, and he died. The craziest part is how we found out about it. After a day at the lake, my buddies and I were hanging out at my buddy's house. We were randomly reminiscing about how weird this effing kid was and wondering what had happened to him. This sounds made up, but I swear to God, in the middle of this conversation, I'm mindlessly scrolling Facebook and randomly see a link to a GoFundMe for his funeral by a mutual friend on Facebook. The room went silent, and we all immediately felt like shit for laughing at this guy, who we now knew had died. It felt like a sign from the universe to stop being assholes. 
Then we looked into how he died and were like, holy effing shit. We then didn't feel bad for him, but we sure as shit weren't laughing anymore. There was this one time back in middle school, I was probably in eighth grade at the time. I was walking to school about two streets away when I saw a woman grab a kid off the street, drag him into her van, beat him, drive off about 150 feet, then pull over and throw the boy onto the road and drive off. I still have no idea why, who she is, and how she thought that was a good idea. We're in San Diego. It's my buddy's last day in the Navy, so we've been goodbye partying. There are four of us. About 2 a.m., we hit up a taco stand with a bunch of outdoor tables. As we're sitting down to eat, my dumbass friends start elbowing me, pointing and laughing at three of the biggest cholas you ever saw in your life. These girls were easily 275 each, tatted up, Crayola eyebrows, tube tops, the whole nine, and they're sitting right next to us. Dumbass thinks he's being subtle, but that's why he's dumbass. We're trying hard to ignore him, but they notice. One of them comes over to him and says, Something funny, huh? What, cuz I'm fat? Cuz I'm fat? Every time she said fat, she slapped her gut and thrust it into my head while he just sat there looking down or at us for help. We were far too busy trying to not escalate the situation with laughter. Eventually, three of these girls have surrounded him and are just belly bulging the shit out of him. The leader goes, well, since I'm fat, guess I'll need to take your burrito. Then she did just that. These broads went back to their table, set his nicely wrapped burrito down, and continued their meal. We started dumbass down, silently judging his bitchiness. He was made a weak-ass lunge for his burrito, and she deftly yanked it away and threatened to beat his ass if he tried it again. She finished her meal, then threw his shit away and left. When we got back to base, the entire boat clowned him mercilessly until he left the next day. I mean, you could get mad about somebody and you could challenge them, but try not to mess with people's food. I mean, you got bullied and she ate your burrito. Driving past the suburban train station with a 40 kilometer speed limit during a quiet time of day, I saw a guy in a pink leotard and matching tutu doing a gymnastics routine on the grass area. Okay, slightly weird until he did have a handstand with his leg at 90 degrees out to the sides and proceeded to do a shit out of a hole in the leotard. They caught my attention enough to say that it looked like he was giving birth to a log. He was also wearing a tiara and had a look of complete concentration on his face. I thought about calling the police for a welfare check until I realized that the police station was right next door, so I just kept driving. Had a patient that was angry she was in the hospital and would throw herself face first into the floor. Repeatedly, she'd actually dive onto the floor like she was driving into water, but it was a linoleum floor. Broke her wrist the first time, put her in restraints, she seemed good. Take her off restraints, and she'd go at it again. But here's the kicker. She was not mentally impaired. She was angry at her husband for having a mistress, so she decided to run up her hospital bill to try and bankrupt them both before he could even see her. I had a patient once who was unable to be let out of full body gurney restraints. Any time in trials where he was let out with supervision and under heavy sedation, he would immediately claw and cut into his own abdomen with his bare hands and attempt to pull out his intestines and viscera. He was nonverbal and essentially comatose while restrained and only attempted this singular action any time it was trialed to free a hand under various new medications. He will live his entire life in full restraints, strapped to a hospital bed in a constant struggle to be disemboweled himself. If there's a hell, there it is.